A very good afternoon and thank you so much for having taken the time to have joined our webinar today. My name is Jay and I am an Identity Access Management and Security Consultant here at Manage Engine. So before we get started, let's do a quick audio video check. You early birds are going to essentially help me out, uh, check the audio and video. I'm going to start off with a quick one, two, three. If you can hear me say one, two, three. Please use the chat window to say one, two, three. A quick audio check. Awesome. Thank you so much, Nick, John, Steve, and Andrew. Wonderful. So uh, audio is all set and all good. Next up, a quick check on the video. If you can see my screen that says top five password management techniques for better IT security and efficiency. If you can see that, you can give me a thumbs up or say good to go. A quick audio video check guys you've already confirmed on the audio i would want to uh, also confirm again thank you so much lovely lovely thank you so much gerald nick james once again thank you so much guys we are all set so this is uh, the 26th webinar in the global webinar series that we are organizing here at manage engine uh, it's almost about uh, six months down now and we've uh, organized webinars around a lot of interesting and important topics for IT security and identity and access management. Along those lines, today's webinar is going to be another webinar around IT security and identity access management going hand in hand. What are we talking about today? We are talking about the age old problem or challenge of passwords. So we are essentially going to be exploring ways to better understand and better manage passwords. This is not something that is new to us. We've had passports, the pop, pass, sorry, pass, passwords since time immemorial. We've been working with passwords in uh, various platforms. Talking about identity management, it becomes uh, uh, very important uh, that administrators take hold of their systems and have best password practices or policies in place. So that being said, we will need to understand uh, one thing today. The IT uh, for organizations across the world, it's, it is undergoing a massive overhaul. Why would I say that? So keep thinking about that before which I'd like to quickly confirm a few questions that have already come up. Yes, a recording of the webinar will be available. If you have questions coming up, please feel free to drop your questions right away as in when you get your questions. I'll try and answer as many as possible during the session. That shouldn't be a problem. Questions are uh, good, most welcome. We'd love to take them and the recording is also going to be uh, available. For those of you who've joined in now, the webinars just begin. We are talking about password challenges that organizations face and how do you get best practices implemented for password management. So we were talking about the specific challenge administrators today face. When it comes to identity management, it is no longer just your on-prem identity management, not just Active Directory, right? You have about 10 other applications where your users have their identities. We are talking about platforms like Office 365, platforms like G Suite, platforms or other applications like Salesforce, uh, uh, lots of other applications. So you would need to understand that your user very much expects a very uh, consumeristic treatment. So they want a great user experience. That being said, administrators have become quite efficient in uh, offering amazing experiences to their users, no doubt about that. Services are top class, all of that said, but there's this challenge that we need to handle. When it comes to uh, the problem of security over usability or usability over security, it is always a tough decision to make. So today's webinar is essentially going to give you action items that you can go back and implement right away, right after the webinar, no delay, right after the webinar, you can go and implement them. They're quite easy and straightforward. And you'd be surprised as to how beautifully both security and usability gets handled all through all the five tips that I'm going to be essentially giving you through the session. We'll start off by understanding the shortcomings of what AD 
uh, has. Essentially, when it comes to Active Directory, it's been there around for a very, very long time, to be precise, almost about two decades now. The password policies haven't considerably gone through uh, any change or an update. It's still the same old, same old password policies. Now, your attackers or hackers or all those people with malicious intent are no longer, uh, you know, uh, 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 settling for some basic password cracking tool. They have complex machine learning powered, artificial intelligence powered supercomputers that can very much track users behavior find out lots of parameters calculate and give you uh, like a user's password or help you crack a password so we are talking about sophisticated attackers dealing with basic ad password policies now how is that even a fair war there are lots of instances where active directory passwords have fallen short in multiple ways so we will need to understand that the one size fits it all approach is not going to be good enough my administrators would need a stronger password policy. That is an obvious requirement. Users with privileges in Active Directory would require a stronger password policy. That is another requirement. Likewise, users belonging to different uh, OUs, different groups and organizations would require different levels of security. That is very understandable. But does Active Directory let you get fine-grained? Now, if you are thinking fine-grained password policy in your head, not a problem. Administrators still use FGPP as they call it. But then, how is FGPP any different from the GPO or the SecPol policies that you apply? It is super confusing for administrators to understand what takes precedence, number one. And number two, having OU-based restrictions, having group-based restrictions, having that granularity to F through FGPP isn't... Uh, as good as an administrator would expect uh, it to be. So this is just the basics. We are talking about policies that cater to specific contexts. We don't have them. We necessarily need them. Number two is being victim of uh, your users sloppiness. Now when we're talking about users and when we give them provisions to set their own passwords, what happens almost Every time they successfully manage to disappoint us with a very, very weak password. What do we do about that? They tend to do incremental passwords. In fact, at some point in time, you yourself in your life would have done incremental passwords. You would have started with password at 123. I'm pretty sure you're having a smile on your face right now. Everybody has done password at 123 at least one once. So that being said, users tend to do passwords incrementally. Passwords at 1, 2, 3, passwords at 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, what we need is to understand that the system essentially does not stop the user from keeping such a password or setting such a password. Now, how can you blame them? So we would need a system that could take into consideration that passwords that are set incremental are vulnerable that is something that needs to be taken into account and the system should be able to prevent such passwords we are going to be talking about that way forward we'll also need to understand that our users are bound to have dictionary words as part of their passwords let alone password at one two three they definitely have dictionary words no doubt about that how do we stop that now if you are in the process of having an hybrid environment half AD and half Azure, if you're right there, your Azure AD has this provision to block patterns or to block certain words or dictionary words. Now, I would want you to go back and check the list of dictionary words that Azure AD essentially stops you from using. You would be surprised. The list is as small as 500 words. Now, come on. How are our users just going to set uh, passwords from, from a dictionary that is that small? The, we de definitely need a larger dictionary. Now, that is again a problem. So, in Active Directory, you don't have that provision as well. So, we're talking about another big challenge. Over the years, there have been multiple formats of password compromises and password attacks. Now, Active Directory should have definitely... Uh, 
bolster for that uh, specific problem we need that right that that's not happening essentially so we would want to go forward have a solution that can essentially help us from such issues that is one thing the next one is going to be expiration uh when it comes to passwords what does microsoft do how do they notify you when a password is about to expire that's a quick question for you guys let's see who gets it right how does microsoft remind a user of their password expiry that is a question for you let's see who gets it right awesome jake has got it right the answer is a pop up yes that's how they do it the microsoft's best practice for password expiry reminder is a pop up and what do users do when they see a pop up they close the pop up that's the first thing that they do so we've got a lot of challenges that are a part of the existing solution now how do we solve all of this is our question no matter how hard you try you're still going to have users who set weak passwords users who still try and come up with workarounds for your existing system you're an administrator who's super diligent who goes around setting up the best solutions to guard the security of your organization you have the best in class sim solution you have an ai and ml powered uh, security solution that prevents attacks and all of that but at the same time you have users in your organization who write their passwords on a piece of paper or a sticky note and have it stuck right on top of their desktop now what do you do about that the whole point of having a security solution that strong is now defeated the purpose is defeated now what you'll have to understand is the security of your organization is only as strong as the weakest link and in this case the weakest link are your users so we will need ways to make it easy for them just so that they don't come up with some creative a uh, work around or not so creative work around for that matter we would need to ensure that their passwords are reset right when they have to be reset at the same time we would need to ensure that their passwords adhere to your complexity requirements so we've got quite a few challenges at hand and we would uh, love to have a holistic one stop solution that caters to all these problems would we not that is exactly where our uh, solution in today's uh, discussion ad self service plus or the self service module of ad 360 comes into the picture so we were talking about how active directories password policies are not good enough for today's game we've got the gpo and secpol right here we've got the uh, fine grain password policy right here that isn't also going to be enough and then going forward what you need to understand is there are these limitations like ou restrictions you cannot have gpos linked to an organization set filters for ou so you do not have additional settings on your passwords per pertaining to having filters right then an fgpp does not really get your password control the way you want it to be so what you'll have to understand is ad self service plus the solution in hand is essentially going to tackle or help you manage these five instances or these five problems okay we've got uh, the following right here the first one is going to be self service for your users the next one is going to be having a multi factor authentication in the picture followed by that we would want to have a uh, strong custom password policies the ones that essentially strengthen your existing password policies and we also need a single sign on solution and why is that our users expect mobility they use a ton of applications and it makes absolute sense to lower the password fatigue by getting them to access all these applications from a single dashboard and finally the most important problem the million dollar question how do you get your users not to forget to reset their passwords how do you notify them upon an impending password reset we'll be talking about that as well the first part of the session is going to be about how do you get them on board how do you get them to agree to your new password idea so many a times we know how our users operate you send an email to them one they either 
don't respond or two even worse they never read your email that being said i would like this specific way of doing it this is the forced enrollment in fact my favorite approach towards getting the job done where you have this logon script pop up when the user logs in after you in, after you initiate the program they would not be able to go forward without enrolling and enrollment is actually quite easy it takes about uh two minutes to get the enrollment done all that the user needs to do is click enroll select the security questions for which they need to answer set uh, a second factor of authentication and get going that is as simple as that and in fact trust me if your users are non-cooperative they don't get the job done the forced enrollment works like magic all the time the next one is going to be the provision to perform uh, enrollment manually which again works in organizations uh, where you have a pre-built database of users and security questions you can very much import data and get all your users onboarded so the first problem or challenge is to get all of them on board you can either force it or you can do it manually you've got the option the next problem is to get them to actually use the solution so the way how we do it is we do it straight and forward plain and simple uh, way uh, all that the user has to do is if they have a password problem they need to self-serve themselves right at the place where the problem occurs and where is that the login screen users forget their passwords on the login screen users get logged out on the login screen users want to reset their passwords on the login screen so everything that pertains to passwords almost 90 percent of the time happens on the login screen and that is exactly why we've got the functionality also working on the login screen so they would be able to reset their passwords or unlock their accounts upon a single click they'd be redirected to a simple basic window where they answer a couple of questions and get their job done but what we also understood is when it comes to resetting passwords or changing passwords microsoft has a very uh, different approach to it i would not recommend it because when a user who's trying to reset their password uh, enters a new password and says okay thinking that that is going to be the new password all that microsoft does is it says nope you can't keep this as your password or set this as your password because it did not meet the requirement complexity requirement that's all it does how is the user going to be informed about what uh, factors or parameters or requirements does the password have what complexity requirements does the password have and that's exactly why we thought why not bring in the password requirements or complexity checkboxes right where they are trying to do the password reset so as they keep typing their new password checkboxes get filled once they meet all the conditions they would be able to set their new password saving a lot of trouble because when you give them the self-service provision if this were not available you'd still get calls it's never going to be self-served without this specific option again what we need to understand here is it's not just users inside the organization anymore right there are statistics that prove uh, that over the last year the number of users who are on the go or traveling has improved by seven percentage that's a huge number considering how businesses are moving in fact quite a lot of organizations are now open to the uh, culture of working from home in fact my organization helps me work from my home i can work remotely now what is uh, the challenge right here for the user it's going to be super comfortable but for the administrator the variables that are involved in this specific uh, event are quite unpredictable i could probably be accessing a critical resource in my environment over a public wi-fi i could probably be compromising security or making my organization vulnerable because i'm in a starbucks using the free wi-fi and there could potentially be an attacker you would never know so that being the case we would want to ensure two things one from a user standpoint make it easy for the users to self-manage their passwords even if they're on the go that is number one and number two from an admin standpoint you would want to ensure that the security is in still intact 
irrespective of the fact whether they are accessing it from on prem or outside prem and that is exactly where ad self service plus comes into the picture and gives you this wonderful functionality of helping your users on the go self reset their password how does that work all that the user needs to do is just like an on prem user click on the reset password and account unlock and rest of it works like magic now let's assume this scenario i'm working uh, from uh, a different time zone let's say i am in a different geographical location i've come here for a presentation it's the middle of the night back in my country it's evening right here from the place where i'm working so i am locked out of my uh, account and i essentially want to unlock myself or reset my password can i call up my administrator back in my country it's in the it's it's it's, it's in the it's the middle of the night i cannot call the administrator okay let's say my administrator is super sweet adam he is super friendly i still call adam up and adam uh, helps me starts working on this uh, this situation i tell him what's my problem i want him to reset my password adam does a password reset for me and intimates the new password okay now i'm going to go on and be super happy that adam was amazing i thank adam and then get uh, to my system and try my new password but much to my surprise the password does not work adam just reset my password the new password also does not work and what is the problem adam did not know that i was away from my environment adam did not know that i was not connected to my environment now i should have necessarily told adam this so i call up adam and i tell him it's not working and the next question adam asks is where am i working from i tell him i'm working from a different time zone and different country so adam gives me this kick ass solution saying no problem you could self reset yourself with this button right here and he tells me what i'm supposed to do and in the background it looked so seamless that i was actually connected to my organization's network and it got all of this got done in under a minute but in the background there was this beautiful process that i had adam had configured for me so though i'm not a part of the domain anymore technically i'm outside the domain i when i click on that specific link right there open a portal back into my active directory a vpn network gets established to my active directory back in uh, australia when i make this request ad self service plus mediates this request ad self service plus verifies my credibility because i'll have to answer a couple of security questions do a second factor of authentication and then lets me reset my password on active directory and through the same vpn portal my new credentials get transferred and my existing credentials on my machine which is the cached password gets updated so now all of this happens in a fraction of second as and it make and it makes the whole thing look super seamless and instantaneous so all i'll have to do is log in or click from the um, login screen where i have the reset option it does all of this hard work and weight lifting in the background it makes my whole effort look seamless and the experience amazing so be it a user on the go or be it a user uh, inside your premise both of them get the same level of experience that is the whole point of ensuring uh, great usability and effect efficiency for your users that is number 1 and number 2 at the same time since you have ad self service plus mediating this whole communication and since there is a vpn network that is super secured uh, in place chances for a man in the middle attack or anything of that sort is almost next to impossible and we support the best in class vendors like 40 client uh, sonic wall checkpoint cisco and all of that and if you have your own vpn provider as well we let you link with that too so when it comes to password management it is important that you let them self serve themselves now we were talking about users on the go likewise if you were to consider users based on their risk profiles are the ones that are critical to your organization the top priority obviously goes to the administrators or users with privileges in your network because they essentially have the keys to your kingdom you would not want their accounts to be compromised at no cost and number 2 obviously the users who are on the go your traveling soldiers or road warriors or however you'd like to call them they operate 
from public networks most of the time and expose your network so again the security uh, for, for, from their standpoint is also important that's exactly where ad self service plus steps in the picture and enables you to implement a multi-factor authentication for these specific set of users you can have restrictions based on OUs. you can have restrictions based on groups what not any filter that you want to set you can set multi-factor authentications for specific users and make it very contextual so if it's an administrator you would want say three factors if it's a user on the go you would want two factors if it's an administrator you would want probably face id to also be in place you could enable that not a problem if it's an uh, uh, user on the go you would probably want them just to do it with their touch id that could also work so almost all uh, new age factors of authentication like the google authenticator duo radius rsid or the old ones like security questions and the good old uh, passwords or otps sent over text messages and emails all of that is supported so multi-factor authentication can save the day for you if you do it right and here it's also done granular you know which user needs to get what now again if you are a user of a hybrid infrastructure that is you have azure ad also in place or office 365 in place i strongly recommend that you access this specific link that i'm going to be sharing right now or just give me one second i'll pull that link up and have that hit on your chat right now so secure score for office 365 so way forward the future is going to be microsoft 365 no doubt and secure score right here gives you a glimpse of microsoft's vision for security so if you are using office 365 right now immediately click on this link and tell me what your secure score is so this gives you a realistic uh, picture or a real-time picture so to say as to what is your organization's security posture so all those potential vulnerabilities out there pertaining to passwords self-service multi-factor authentication you can very much fix that in a few minutes and improve your secure score drastically so when you're trying to access the secure score dashboard if you've got office 365 do drop me a message as to what's your secure score i'd love to know who's got what and when you go through the list of action items that microsoft gives you or recommendations that you have to do you would see multi-factor authentication popping up quite a few times you would see self-service popping up quite a few times because both of these functionalities make it super difficult for an attacker or a, uh, or, or, or a, <clears throat> a user with a malicious intent to try and hack into someone's account so we are talking about ensuring an extra layer of security with multi-factor authentication so if you have an active directory environment no problem I would give you an easy workaround who, uh, without secure score and I'll tell you how to get that done. Windows TFA, that's going to be the answer. So you can uh, essentially establish a second factor of authentication right when a user logs in. What if I tell you your users need to re-verify themselves or authenticate with a dual security or a RSID or a, a one-time password that gets into an email? right when they are logging onto their desktops let's say i'm the administrator and let me quickly try and log in with my password so i'm the hacker right now and i've figured out the administrator's password and i'm bam i'm super happy that i'm going to get access into the environment but what happens right here there's this window that pops up and asks for a second factor of authentication wow i did not come uh, see this coming the hacker has no way to penetrate right here because i am going to have a personalized factor right here which is an uh, otp that gets sent to my email if i want it to be all the more secure i suggest you do face ids or touch ids or time-based otps that are configured for specific devices we've got uh, tons of options and you would want to implement this not just for applications but for your very login so all those administrative accounts get access into the system or a server only after they re-authenticate themselves or verify themselves with a second factor of authentication so this is a killer feature because it's not just available on windows it's available across operating systems on linux and mac please do implement that it takes less than five minutes to get this rolled out
right? So we were talking about security for administrators. What about security for your users? We would want to ensure that there is this balance, not make it complex at the same time, uh, also ensure the security isn't compromised, the passwords are stronger. So we were talking about how Microsoft's password policies aren't good enough for uh, uh, the attacks that the attackers pull on your organization. Password attacks, it could be a brute force attack. How is your organization equipped for that? It could be a dictionary attack. Now, how do you restrict your users from not using dictionary words? Simple as this. Choose a dictionary. Thousands of dictionaries are available online. That's exactly what an attacker does. Goes online, looks up for a dictionary, loads it into the tool and initiates the attack. Do the same thing. All you're doing is reversing the whole process for your attacker. Download the dictionary, get the product to stop users from setting passwords from the dictionary and there you go, problem solved. The next one is patterns. We are very sure that our users are going to have certain predictable patterns. They are users after all, what do you expect? Passwords, common passwords, the most commonly used one like password at 123 or organization at 123, name of the company followed by a few digits or their first name, last name, things like that that are super common and very predictable. They can go into your patterns module right here and you can stop your users from setting passwords that resemble anything close to this. And in fact, incremental passwords was another problem that we we're talking in the beginning. You can stop users from using passwords uh, or that have characters from your previous passwords or old passwords. You can have password histories work in your favor. You could do quite a lot around the password policy enforcement module and I would want you to go on, explore and tell me which one works best for you. In fact, we've got all of these functionalities working on the login screen so that saves a lot of trouble. So all those policies that you saw in the first screenshot that I showed you, these are the policies that work in the background. So when I change a policy right here that gets reflected during the logon when someone's trying to change their password. So as simple as that. And we also wanted to ensure that uh, the administrators get an upper hand in this specific instance. What if I tell you, you can have a see-through report that gives you access to all logon failures. That would be a great resource for you to check whose logon has failed, right? When they repeatedly fail because of bad passwords, you would know that they failed. That is a wonderful report that you can get hold of. Again, hardening the security an extra level when you are trying to have your users set a few security questions, you can give suggestions telling them how strong the answer needs to be. Likewise, if you want to restrict a few inactive users from logging in, inactive users most of the time turn out to be a major cause for a security threat. They are an attacker's honeypot, so you would not want them to be in a position to get hold of any inactive accounts. So you would want that as well to be strengthened. And we've got quite a lot of password strengtheners and security question and answers all through the function, all through the solution that's built. And where are we right now? We are right here where we've consumed quite a few information and quite a few steps on how to secure. We've been talking about self-service for your users. We've been talking about setting up MFA for applications and setting up TFA for your login. And yes, the last aspect was password policy enforcement where we saw how to strengthen passwords. Now, time for some little math. <laughs> don't, don't disconnect, don't disconnect. This is just going to last for another minute, I know. So we've got 500 users, let's say, in an organization, okay? On an average, a user calls up the administrator 20 times a year. So doing the math, we've got about uh, 10,000 calls in uh, complete in like one full year. And much to your surprise, or you, you would probably even be knowing this, 30% of calls for the help desk are for mere password resets. Is there anybody who's got more than 30%? If that is the case, I'm, feel, I'm, I'm feeling super sorry for you. But at the same time, I'm also feeling happy for you because you made it to the webinar and you now know how to overcome that problem. So 30% of these uh, calls are for password reset. That makes it 3,000 calls for password resets in a year. Taking the bare minimum, you would end up spending 
thirty thousand dollars for catering to something as simple and something uh, uh, as uh, uh, self-sufficient. I mean, some some if your users are self-sufficient, you can save thirty thousand dollars. So you can very much go on tell your folks in your organization that see next year I'm going to save. 30,000 for my organization and what I'm going to do is towards the end of the webinar I'm going to give you access to a cool tool. We call it the password uh, reset cost saver Okay, you can enter your own variables inside you can tell how huge your organization is how many call your employees make what percentage of those calls of a password resets and what's the cost per call and calculate and Download a beautiful report and take that report back to your uh, management and tell them, see, I'm going to save $30,000. So, uh, so them, I'm pretty sure they're going to be super impressed. It's as simple as implementing a solution that gives you all these benefits, that lets you uh, do all of these password management functionalities, including providing single sign-on for all your users, giving them uh, OU-specific accesses, restrictions uh, restricted access to these uh, applications you could do quite a lot let's say you have a sales department and you'd want them just to have access to 10 applications let's say you have a marketing department you'd want them to have access to 10 other applications you could give them access to all of that from this single sign-on dashboard and the best part is since you have all those security best practices already in place you don't even need to worry all that your user needs to do is just log into this dashboard and then get instant access to 100 other application. And here you're trying to solve two major problems, making it simple for the users and also at the same time, making your users not get sloppy or fatigue out of passwords because they tend to keep the same password for all their solutions, finally compromising the security for all those applications. We are talking about having the provision of a single sign-on dashboard <clears throat> so when it comes to the licensing, I've got a uh, quick question. Nick asks me, how does the licensing work? Does it work based on users? Yes, absolutely. Yes, it works based on users. So we've got, uh, let's say 500 users. It's, it's priced per user and that's how it works. So in this specific example that I'm talking about, we've got a single sign on dashboard where a user gets access to let's say 100 plus application and the best part is the solution gives you reports into how uh, a user uh, engages with an application so if there are any applications that the user never uses you'd get a report for that if there are any uh, uh, deviations or any inactive users not making the best of use you would get reports for that and again when it comes to AD Self Service Plus as a tool we've got a, quite a lot of uh, good stuff bundled into the product and one another functionality the last functionality for the day is going to be one such good functionality that comes for free yes you heard me right this functionality is available for free you can go on download this and tell me how it saved your day we're talking about password expiry notification so I'm pretty sure you already know what's the problem with Microsoft's password expiry notification. It doesn't work. So what if I tell you you can have a push notification, a text message, an email, all sorts of notifications set for your users and that too not one notification or one set but multiple sets repeated over a course of time. Now the key ingredient is doing it repeatedly over a said frequency. The one that best works for me is doing it one week before the password reset, three days, then one day prior to the password reset and uh, change the message or uh, increase the intensity of the message as you approach the deadline. So you could very much do that. This is a wonderfully helpful functionality and this is available absolutely free, download it. All you have to do is just drop me a mail in the towards the end of the webinar, I'll give you my ID and I'll give you access to this password expiry notification tool. Trust me, we've had so many users telling us as to how uh, password expiry notification helped them and how the call volumes drastically reduced. So since I had a question about licensing, another thing that we are giving away for free is AD Self Service Plus as a tool is available for free 
uh, for your first 50 users. If you have 50 users, go on, implement the tool, use it, uh, and, and, and make the fullest use of it. Uh, and in fact, if you have more users, I suggest you start with the password expiry notification that's absolutely free. No limitation on number of users. You could very much use that as well. So AD Self Service Plus as a tool, uh, accumulates a lot of functionalities like multi-factor authentication, TFA on, log on, helping your users self-serve themselves, doing a self-service for users even who are users working remotely, helping them single sign-on and quite a lot of other password related reports that would save your day. The uh, uh, AD Self Service Plus functionality is a part of the AD 360 module. If you want to try that, you could very much go on and do that. We understand that this war between native tools that have limited capabilities and your identity access management platform like Active Directory or Office 365 is quite an unfair one and that's exactly why we want to step in and be by your side when you uh, wage this war. We want to make it easy for you. We've got a couple of free tools out there. We've got a lot of wonderfully written resources like ebooks that are going to help you strengthen your password security in fact in our team we put together a ebook that could change the way how you operate your password security thank you so much for being such a wonderful audience you all have a great day my name is jay your presenter for the day and this session was on password management techniques to help you better manage your it security and improve your it efficiency you guys have been wonderful Cheers, tada. I'm available for questions right now. Please shoot your questions right away and I'll try and take them. Thank you.